Well, welcome to another Lightblade Learning Lab. Today we're going to do another very important initial session. Before you go flying off on this machine and try and do all sorts of wonderful things, there are still a few basics that you must grab hold of. As I pointed out to you guys when I first started these sessions off, I'm learning this machine the same as you. I've not been used to this system here, which is an autofocus system. To me, I've always had, if I want to raise the table, I press a button and the table comes up. Now, my table doesn't do that. This table has got a lot of overrun on it, you'll notice. Stop the button and it carries on for another two seconds. Raise the button, two seconds. It takes two seconds to stop, unless, Okay, this mic switch here stops that table a lot quicker than the manual shift button. So if we look just under here, you'll see that we've got a micro switch. That micro switch there is in fact detecting the top of this table stroke. And there is an interplay between that switch and this switch here, which sets up the autofocus system. What we do want to know is how to make sure that we don't damage this micro switch system called a pen and for obvious reasons you can see why it's called a pen. I've already had a go at trying to wipe this pen out because of my stupidity and my inexperience. Okay so I have been stupid but I'd like to pass on the experience that I gained from that stupidity to you so that you don't run the same risk of wiping out this pen micro switch. So what I'm going to demonstrate to you is a standard way that you should approach autofocus setting. If you're going to change the thickness of your material um, or the way in which your bed is configured, at the moment we've got it configured with slats on it, in a few moments time we'll put the honeycomb bed on and we'll start off with the honeycomb bed. Okay now we'll start off by looking at the control panel itself and if you remember the last time to control the bed going up and down you press the ZU button and at the top there we've got Z move which allows you to make the table go down or raise the table up. So you can do that manually, and you can get it nearly where you want it. You don't have to, you can just leave it wherever it is last time, um, and we can start from there. So if we jump down to autofocus, but before I press the enter button, I'm going to focus on the job so that we can see what's going to happen. Now what I'm going to do first of all, is pop the honeycomb bed in. Now, I could be wanting to mark something like that. Now, obviously, that won't go under there. So what I would have to do would be to press the down key to start with to even get it under there. So I'd have to drip, look, drop the table to start with. But I'm going to use a much worse case than that, which is going to test the machine to its limit. And that's a thin piece of material. Now, to make it easier to see what's going on, we can bring the, bring the head towards us. Now, I've set the machine up. Before I press that autofocus button, stop and think. Always stop and think. What haven't I done? Well, the one thing that I haven't done, and I want to make a big point of this because this is most important. Now, I've got a little extension handle on here, which we'll talk about in a minute. But I want you to, first of all, undo the head and slide it right up to the top of its stroke and lock it up. That is the most important lesson that you will ever learn about autofocus. And now we can go and we can press the autofocus button. Enter. And we'll zoom in gently. Now you'll notice the nozzle hasn't touched. And the table is doing a bit of a barn dance. Left leg in, right leg out. And now it's backed off to a dimension that is about eight millimeters below the nozzle. I say about, it's, it's a dimension that has been decided and set for the focus of that lens. Now all lenses are set to the same clearance here and we'll talk about that in a completely separate session about lenses. 
At the moment this is autofocus day. So we've now set the autofocus up successfully and we can go away and we can cut our job without touching anything. Now the important thing here is, and I'm going to show you this, we can drive this head to the extremity and it touches nothing. We can drive it to the back extremity and it touches nothing. We can drive it over here and it touches nothing. I will show you something about that position in a few minutes time, which is why I want you to understand the first and most important lesson is lift the head up. We'll just check the last position. There's nothing there for it to hit. Scenario number two. We successfully completed our job using the honeycomb table. We're now going to remove the honeycomb table and then we're going to use the slats instead. And we'll now ask it to reset the autofocus. Think, think, think. This is already at the top of its stroke, so I don't have to do that again. Oh dear. Listen. The table has basically gone up to the micro switch, tested the micro switch position two or three times, backed off to a position, a safe position now. Only now can we do this. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to drop this pen down. By the way, at all times you can undo these screws and this will I've got these done up finger tight because I don't want to I don't want to run the risk of stripping the threads. But at all stages, look, this thing can be loose. The correct setting position for this is down on its collar. Okay, that's now secure, it's not moving around. <clears throat> but what we're going to try and do now is we're going to drop this down to get the to get the sensor to just about touch the surface. We're not trying to make the switch, we're just trying to get it within half a mil or a millimetre of the surface and then we'll tighten up and lock it in that position. Now we'll go back and we'll try the autofocus. Autofocus, enter. Now bear in mind that I've got one and a half millimetre material on there at the moment. You couldn't get much thinner than that except card. But what I'm now going to do is to demonstrate somewhere that you can easily make a mistake if you don't follow these rules. We'll drive the head to the back and we can see that the sensor is well clear of this surface because it's a sixteenth plus whatever gap you can see there. Now on this side of the machine here, there is no way that the sensor can ever get to this back point here because it's always sitting forward of it. So there's no way that that sensor can touch, even if it's set wrongly, can it touch this back face here or this edge. And it can't get to this edge because it's on the wrong side. The nozzle will always clear this surface. Let's see what happens when we get to the other end of the stroke. Now. At that point there, the sensor is becoming at risk. We're not at the end of the stroke yet, but the sensor is still well clear of this surface here. There we are, we're now at the end of the stroke, but the sensor goes beyond the extremity of the stroke of the machine. And that's why it's most important that you go through this correct setting procedure, otherwise you will wipe that sensor out if ever you drive over to this edge position. So I mentioned in a previous session about moving the head around with the XY buttons. I want you to just notice how quickly the head stops when I lift my finger off. So it's move off, move off. The point I want to make there is if you run it at 200, 
you'll get an overrun and you've got to anticipate the end of the stroke. With 100 millimeters a second, it's completely snap responsive. And it's still fast enough to move around the job reasonably quickly. You haven't got to be that patient to wait for it. We're going to change to another table format now. And this is a table format that I have designed for myself. This is not anything to do with Think Laser. They may decide to adopt this as an alternative, but if not, you can make one yourself. Now, this, this is a pin table for cutting card, particularly for card. And what I have is a series of dowels which drop through the, through the table and they locate on the steel surface underneath. So all the pins are the same length and by the time we finish up with a series of pins on here, we should finish up with effectively a pin projection of this flat surface, like this. Okay, now, I'm not going to go too far with this, other than the fact that one of the problems that you're going to have is because we want to cut paper, how do we auto-focus on paper? Could be a little tricky. Card? Well, card is generally around about half a millimetre thick, and so we've got some half millimetre thick stainless steel there, and that's what I shall use for setting up my auto-focus. Let's go through the same routine again. The more we do it, the safer we shall be because it'll be ingrained into our brain to get the procedure right. So before I press the autofocus button, have I got my head raised right up? Yes. Autofocus, check, check, check again, yes. Okay, now the fact that I've got the head right up means that there's no chance ever that that's going to get anywhere near any of these external surfaces. So when you see that high, you're completely safe. So now I could go ahead and I could put my card or paper on there and it would be perfectly in focus. Now, something else that I regularly use, particularly for cutting acrylic, I don't have a honeycomb bed on my other machine. And so, in general, what I try to do is when I'm cutting acrylic, I use these little things. Steel plate, magnets, fantastic. And what that allows me to do is to raise the acrylic off the surface so that I can get air flow underneath. And quite often I will use two rather than one. You can have whatever thickness you like to, as, as a spacer. This is my approach. Here's another a cheap approach to the same problem. Get yourself a set of matched dome nuts and they will do the job just as well. Now, I personally wouldn't use dome nuts or anything like that or magnets for supporting card. We shall do some card work in a future session and I'll show you the importance of a pin bed. We'll just drive the lesson home with one last attempt. So we're going to set the autofocus on this job this time. Now that's five millimeter acrylic and it's packed up who knows to what height. It doesn't matter. So we go to the autofocus and before we push the autofocus enter button, check 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 are we at the top of the stroke yes enter so now we're doing the barn dance we're not in quite the right position so we have to let this down set it down onto and lift it up from about half a mil So now we can try the autofocus again for the last time. Autofocus, 
yes, everything's okay. And there we go. So I hope after half a dozen uses of the uh, autofocus in different positions, the message is sticking. Now just before we close this session, I did say earlier on that I would have a quick talk about this. Now as you can see, the nut that's supplied with the machine has got some finger grips on it here, but to be honest, I found it very difficult to, uh, to wind it on and wind it off. I mean, I never have to touch this on my Chinese machine that I've got over there because it hasn't got autofocus on it. But this has become quite an important feature for an autofocus machine to be able to quickly and easily undo this nut. And I found it difficult to undo it. So I've made myself an 8mm acrylic adapter. And as you can see, <clears throat> It works wonderfully well, but requires very little effort to do a nice solid lock on there. And I'm sure that there will be a copy of this file at Think Laser if you do need it. Now, although I have mentioned dome nuts as being a, a reasonable alternative to magnets and things, I must reiterate that this steel plate is not something that comes as part of the Think Laser standard kit. So if you don't have um, the facilities to make a flat steel plate that will fit onto here and you want to use the existing honeycomb bed, you can use these dome nuts again as I described to you earlier. Or you could use small ball bearings, say six or eight millimeter ball bearings that will sit in the honeycomb. Now both of these options are certainly cheaper than making a pin bed for yourself. The only problem is that anything that is much more than a pin prick, if the laser beam passes over it, it's going to produce a reflection mark. And so you've got to be very careful about how you place these under your job. I must again stress, I'm not a Think Laser employee. This is not a Think Laser machine. This is my machine, which I'm personalizing. But I am trying to produce a series of videos for you guys to follow using a standard Think Laser machine, which is why I'm giving you all the options and the alternatives. Well, thanks very much for your attention. I think you'll probably soon be able to swim without your armbands on. And we've got one or two more little, quite important sessions to do with um, that will make you more efficient at programming and giving you a, a wider understanding of how this machine works or how the software works. So thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next session.